Hi, Joseph. Oh. <laughs> He's incognito, dear. Okay, please rise for the Here Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the Thank you very much. Please call the roll. Councilman Kitchen. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, here. here. Councilman Morrow. Here. Councilman Secreto. Here. Councilman Van Cleek. Here. Supervisor Quigley. Here, thank you very much. Welcome to the Town of Ulster Town Board Workshop meeting for Thursday, March 4th, 2021. Councilman Secreto. Here. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda from the members of the board? Nothing from me. I have an no. issue that is under new business that was inadvertently passed over. Uh, two items. One is a discussion on the manning of the Ryder Park boat launch and post park part time employee uh, solicitation. We will take those up after the discussion on the summer camp. Uh, is there anyone on here who would like to make a comment from the public on any agenda items? And thank you very much. Communications, we have noticed of two items. Are you prepared to read those into the record? Yes, I have them in front of me. Please commence reading them into the record. Uh, the first email I received today from town resident Cynthia Bell. It reads, I appreciate the opportunity to comment on whether or not the town of Ulster requires a comptroller and whether or not that should become a referendum to be brought before the voters. I do not think that this is a necessary action and have heard no compelling arguments to change my mind. The finances yeah. of the town of Ulster are currently adequately handled by the supervisor and staff and I believe that another paid office at town hall will not enhance the quality of our government now or in the future. This will create an additional layer of bureaucracy for which taxpayers will be responsible, noting that other towns in the area of relative size or larger than the town of Ulster have no need for a comptroller. I further intend to take action to explain this position to my fellow citizens if the measure passes. Thank you for your kind attention, Cynthia Bell. Thank you. Second correspondence is another email received today from town resident Regis Obajiski. It reads, Dear Supervisor Quigley, I am unable to, to attend the next town board meeting, but I wish to recommend an agenda item to the town board to consider submitting written comments to the New York State DEC lead agency for the seeker process on the New York City DEP DEIS for modification of their Catalum SPDES permit before the June 16th, 2021 deadline. Yesterday's public hearing, March 3rd, was the second hearing that expanded upon the February 4th hearing at which 20 plus speakers registered their opposition to the inaccuracy of New York, City's, New York City DEP's conclusions of the effects of volume and turbidity of periodic releases into the lower Esopus Creek and on the negative effects of drinking water in seven communities of the Mid-Hudson Valley, which draw from the river below Saugerties. Both hearings had a mix of elected officials, environmental professionals, and citizens who testified that New York City DEP is proposing the cheapest solution possible at the expense of Hudson Valley communities. Four of the 20 registered speakers yesterday were from the town of Ulster, including Councilman John Morrow, Mary Frederick, Luke Olson, and Deborah Nuzzo. Spoke eloquently about important issues such as the unintended consequential death of Lower Esopus Creek and the corresponding diminishment of property values, quality of life, tourism, and recreation activities. Environmental professionals urged DEP to concentrate on upstream measures to re remediate the turbidity levels at the Esopus Creek, the Upper Esopus, and the Ashokan Reservoir itself, instead of flushing on our communities, destructive chemically flocculated turbid waters rushing as though it were from 
a 600 million gallon toilet. I have attached for your perusal two documents produced by Riverkeeper. One is a fact sheet and the other is a sample memorializing resolution. Thank you for considering an official Town of Ulster commentary on the DEIS, Regis Obajeski. Thank you very much for reading those into the agenda uh, and into the meeting record. We will uh, have a discussion and uh, consider Mr. Obajeski's request going forward. Under new business, the first item is a discussion on reopening the town hall to the public, effective Tuesday, March 9th, 2020. Town board and the department heads are aware that the supervisor's office has produced an email that is in the packet um, outlining the operating restrictions and the hours of operation going forward from March 9th and we will take this on a month by month basis. Um, this is being driven by the fact that the Office of Court Administration has allowed the town's Justice Court to reestablish proceedings and open court. So with that being said, uh, anyone uh, have anything to add to the recommendations that are on the floor? No, I think it's a good idea that you're going to put the barriers up in between the water and sewer uh, secretary into your office, too. There's no reason for anyone to go down those aisles. Are we going to have a security guard there, too? Yes, and we have made arrangements for uh, manning the front uh, during the hours of operation with the security guard enforcing the COVID-19 protocols for entry into town hall in accordance with state re uh, recommendations. Where's the barrier going to go by water department? Uh, it's going to prevent the congregation of people in the lunchroom that is for town employees only. We frequently observe lawyers having uh, conversations with their clients in the lunchroom or on the phone with their offices in the lunchroom. And that is not a private office. It is the uh, purpose uh, to be used for the town employees. So well, they're some, still using the office in the back of the courtroom, aren't they, the lawyers? They can if they so choose. Or they're welcome to step outside. And um, so what we want to do is protect the town employees from the, the people that are coming in from the outside. And that barrier won't restrict uh, access, exit access. No, we just, it, it's a, it's like one of those lines you've seen in an airport, John. It's a cloth tape across two stanchions. Okay. Two line. We had, we had one up when we were open last summer and it worked effectively. Good. Okay. So may I have, uh, I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second that. Roll call vote, please. Oh, sorry. Um, it's Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. The second item comes at the request of the town clerk as she has been uh, fielding many phone calls from interested parties seeking to use the senior center. And I open the floor for discussion on reopening the senior center. Um, John? so far as reopening the senior center, they should have to comply with all the regulations of town hall. And I think all the leaders of all the different groups that want to hold a meeting there would have to go to some type of, uh, training seminar with the town clerk or somebody to express exactly what needs to be done. I think in looking at the state regulations this afternoon, they're still restricting um, in, inside the Warren. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, they're still limiting um, to 25 people in one place at one time inside as long as there's social distancing. Yeah, that, would, that includes social distancing, yes. So. Um, I think it would be the responsibility of the organizer to ensure that the appropriate temperatures are taken. Um, contact tracing information is maintained 
and social distancing within the uh, meeting room is adhered to. And I think as long as we put those three conditions on an application that they should sign as an acknowledgement that it is their responsibility to meet, um, I feel comfortable that we uh, are absolved of any liability if we reopen the um, senior center. Mr. Kovacs, any uh, comments on what I just said? I think that's fair as long as um, uh, the group that uses the senior center is less than 25 people, we can prepare a very short agreement that they waive any um, liability against the town. Um, I, I think it can work. And the other thing is, if there's going to be two groups using that facility during the day, that the second group will have to wait until the other, uh, the inside is cleaned. There's got to be a little time lapse in between. Well, I have to have Mr. Kovacs draw up a document for limiting liability that all the people have to sign. So I think it comes down to, um, Ms. Town Clerk, you'd have to coordinate those actions and then you'd have to coordinate with the custodial staff and making sure that the appropriate cleaning is done. Is that something that you're willing to undertake? Yes, yeah. That's okay. I, th I think according to the, some of the state regulation during this COVID time, it has, uh, some of the burden has been put on the public that they have to be aware of and, ab and abide by rulings. And I think we will have some protection from some of these liability concerns because there's been some very broad language protecting people that are like this with a public building. So I think Jason, is that, did I, have I seen that correctly? Yes, just Clayton, I think that's correct. So I would like a motion authorizing the town to reopen the senior center um, with the requirements that the users sign an agreement with the town using uh, the protocols that we have outlined here being namely being temperature taking contact tracing information gathering and social distancing within the uh, building with occupancy limited to 25 people or less. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. Uh, when we put this agenda together, we also included an item that follows here is the discussion on the town of Ulster holding summer camp in 2021. During caucus, I was made aware that there's an upcoming meeting uh, with Mr. Secreto as chairman of the Recreation Committee and some people involved in our summer camp. So I would like to table this issue to the next meeting to give Mr. Secreto an opportunity to have his meeting and gather the facts that we talked about in caucus. I'll second that. motion to table. Okay. We're fine. We can table. Um, two additional items. Um, it came about um, this afternoon when I circulated the agenda that the following was brought to my attention. We have not discussed the manning of the Ryder Park boat launch um, for the season. Um, so I believe that it is the consensus of the board um, that we do want to man it, but we at the present time do not have someone in mind. So what I would like to do is I would like to have a motion made authorizing the town clerk to post on the town's website that the town is seeking an individual for part time employment to man the um, Ryder Park boat launch. The responsibilities will be to enforce the rules and regulations of the park, light landscaping and security. Uh, Jim, them. also add to that for uh, hirees for uh, Post Park. Uh, that was the next item that I wanted to take up. All um, right. So I will put the two of them together. The second topic was is that we normally have maintenance staff at Post Park. It is coming to the point of time when we're going to be opening the park around May 1st. So I would ask for a motion or the following to be added to the motion that the town clerk be authorized to post on the town's Facebook page uh, 
a request for part time applications from individuals who seek part time employment um, at the post park. The responsibilities will include uh, landscaping, cleaning, um, coordinating of um, attendance at the uh, at the pavilions if necessary under COVID restrictions, and just simple security to make sure that nothing happens down there. I'll make, I'll make a motion. motion. We have a motion and a second. May I have a roll call, please? Yes. Councilman Kitchen. Are we going to have a discussion after or before? Would you like to have a discussion, Mr. Kitchen? Yes, yes. You want to bring something to the attention of Councilman Secreto and yourself, which you, in the past, uh, Rocco, we've had um, a lot of garbage and things piling up, as you're well aware of, down at um, Ryder Park. And I was wondering if the attendant will be doing any other tasks besides just collecting money. Uh, will there be a policing of the area after, before they leave to clean up any kind of uh, trash and garbage that's left behind? Or can, can, can whoever's down there maybe assist in just tightening things up a little bit with that? Well, I just wanted your opinion on that. Yeah, no, that's going to be one of his jobs is to walk around, pick up papers. We usually have one of the employees from Post Park come around and pick up the garbage out of the cans. But uh, he'll be responsible for taking uh, some like driftwood off the ramp, cutting the grass, weed whacking. It's not just gonna be sitting there collecting money. Great, thank you, Councilman. Any additional discussion? Councilman no Kitchen? I one, I, I'm sorry. Mr. <laughs> I, I just wanna say that the comments, uh, I support what Eric's concern is, but. I want to add addition to comments last year about the condition of the parks were exceptional. Whatever efforts were made last year, I want to commend because I got a, uh, quite a few positive comments about the park. So thank you. That was with the cooperation of all the departments heads too, to get that park up and running and keeping it running the way it was. Yeah, my, top, my, my concern was more with the Ryder Park, the post park, you know, we just had some garbage issues at the rider in the past. That's all. Okay. Please proceed with the roll call. Yeah. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Chief Berardi, the next item is in reference to a personnel issue in your department. Could you give us a brief explanation before we proceed? Uh, officer Jocelyn Peter has been employed by us as a part-time police officer, uh, as also being employed by the town of Woodstock as a full-time police officer. He has uh, been obtained by the Kingston Police Department as a full-time police officer. Uh, and with that, that, Kingston Police does not allow him to uh, obtain another law enforcement position anywhere else. So he has to resign because of that. So with that said, may I have a motion to accept the resignation of part-time police officer Jocelyn Peters, please? So moved. Second. No, like they had, like John always said, in good faith. In good standing. Good standing. Any discussion? A roll call vote, please. Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Petromold, the next four items are on the agenda at your request. I'm going to ask you to just make a brief um, explanation of each item before we proceed to vote on it. Okay. Okay. The first one is the authorized highway superintendent to go to bid for a nine foot utility body. Yeah, this will be uh, in January. You authorize the, the authorized the highway department to order three chassis. This body will go on one of the chassis. And this is a straight utility body? Correct. Okay. May I have a motion to authorize the bid? I'll make it. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes. The next item is to go to bid for three 10 foot six plows. That is the that is the uh, outfit. All three trucks that we ordered with plows, standard width. Um, they're actually a, 
newer uh, uh, Fisher V plow. It's a ten and a half foot. Okay. I may have a motion to authorize to go out to bid for the three ten point six plows. So moved. So moved. Roll call, please. Second. Councilman McKitchen. Uh, discussion. Uh, I just want to add to that we sit here and we make decisions to order new equipment, new plows for wintertime and different things to the highway department. And I just want to say how many comp, how many times I've heard it this year is that the town of Ulster roads are, are clean, they're clean early. And uh, people are very, uh, very pleased with our highway department. And I just want to just say thank you again to the highway crew and, uh, this is why it's important for us to give our highway department the equipment and tools they need to continue to do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. I'll, I'll pass that along to the rest of the crew. Thank but you. Thank it, you, it's, Frank. Just not, it's not just the crew, as you stated, supervisor and the town board for giving us the manpower and the equipment to do the job. Um, so it's really, it's a collective effort. It's truly, by, truly, by, a, truly a Okay, can Understood. And thank you. Uh, we have a time to be proud of. It. Thank you. Continue with the roll call. Councilman vote. Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes. Thank you. The next item is the two switch and go hoist bodies. And just give us an idea what types of bodies. Um, the two chassis, we're having two chassis with a switch and go system. Um, there'll be two different, uh, dump bodies for, for dump truck work. Uh, there'll be a chipper body for the tree trimming. When we do that, there'll be two, uh, their basic units, uh, which we'll be mounting, uh, sanders on for two of the, for the two chassis that have the switch and go system. And there's also a flatbed system. Um, flatbed will be one of them. So, you know, we could, we could move a different, uh, different components, uh, as we go along here. So it's not just limiting us to what we're ordering. There are other bodies, but uh, we feel that's our, our first step and that's where we're going to start. Um, do these include the bodies or are these just the hoists? Uh, the bid covers the body and the, the, the horse. Yeah. The hoists and the separate bodies. Okay. May I have a motion to authorize the highway superintendent to go to bid on the hoists and bodies? So I'll make that motion. Roll call vote. Any discussion, Eric? No, supervisor. Roll call, please. My kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Affirmative. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next item is a motion to authorize the highway superintendent to go to bid for two 10 foot stainless steel hopper sanders. That's basically explains it. That they'll be going on the switch and go bodies for the winter. And if we get in between where we're not having stores, we could set these off and put a dump body on and do some coal patch or a flatbed on and do some other work. Um, so it, it doesn't limit us to just one use. Any, uh, may have a motion? I'll make it. Second? I'll second. second. Discussion? Roll Councilman call, please. Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Sure, yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda the motion authorizing the supervisor to sign the application for the extension of time for collection of taxes. The application goes to the Commissioner of Finance of Ulster County and it allows the town to continue to collect taxes on behalf of Ulster County until June 1st, 2021. May I have a motion, please? I'll make the motion. May I have a second? I'll second. Councilman Kitchen? Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. The next item 
starting at this top of the second page of our agenda, is a resolution uh, authorizing the town supervisor to sign the employer welfare benefit plan with MVP for the year effective December 1st, 2020. This is a plan that should have been in place before the beginning of the plan year, but because of COVID, MVP was slow in getting it to us. This basically establishes the FSA, the flexible spending account that the town uses to administer the wealth, uh, the health insurance plan. We have a motion, please. I'll make it. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is related to uh, Charles Ryder Park. For the last several years, the town has allowed uh, a nonprofit educational institution to conduct a watercraft steward program, which is a, basically an inspection program of the watercraft coming out of the Hudson River to make sure that there are no critters attached to the bottom that might cause an environmental problem if that boat was put in another body of water and that critter was able to get off. So um, the item is listed as a discussion. We've done this program for five years. Um, maybe I'll just call for a motion authorizing the supervisor to uh, enter into the agreement as we have in prior years with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Saratoga County for a complete watercraft inspection program following the standardized protocols that have been in place um, in previous years. Jim, what I'm saying, they are, they are well accepted down there. Uh, they do get quite a few people coming over to the table and talking to them. That's so good. it is very helpful down there. The program is working as an educational work, as a program. It does, it does. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion. We have second. A second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call. I can tell you the, the importance of that program is amazing. Um, like up in the St. Lawrence River in New York State here, they had a, a ship from Asia um, dump their freshwater bilges into the, uh, into the river, and it polluted the entire river with zebra mussels, which are just e killing the river and moving from lake to lake in the Adirondacks and uh, the Hudson and so forth and so on. It's, it's amazing, but it's so important to clean your boats and steam clean them and so forth. And that's what this education program is about. Uh, proceed with the roll call, please. Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to old business. Uh, last meeting, the town board was presented with the public employer's health emergency plan as required by New York state law. Mr. Van Cleek, would you like to lead the discussion on that plan? I sure can. It was a requirement of New York state that we put together this public employer health emergency plan. So we had the opportunity to put together a committee working with uh, union leaders. I also had the help of um, the, the town clerk, Sus Suzanne Reavy, and then also Paula from the highway department. She helped out also. Uh, we worked with a consultant and came up with this plan and it's been reviewed and I, it's ready for acceptance. So I wanna thank everybody for their help. I have not received any recommendations for revisions. Have you? No. Nope. Uh, any member of the town board that's on this uh, have any comments about the plan as it has been presented? I just I want to note. say that uh, they ahead. did an excellent job putting this together. It was a lot of work and a lot of thought went into it and a lot of talented people put their thoughts into it and their ideas and worked well together and I'm, I'm very proud of everybody involved. Thank you. Mr. Secreto, did you have something? No, uh, John summed it up. Okay. So may uh, moving to the next item, 
we have is a resolution authorizing that the town of Ulster supervisor sign the plan, putting it in full force and effect, and notifying the state of New York in accordance with the rules that were promulgated by the state that we have adopted the plan. So may I have a motion on the resolution in the package? I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion on the resolution? Councilman Kitchen? Yes. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilman Secreto? Yes. Councilman Van Cleek? Yes. Supervisor Quigley? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the discussion on the Town of Ulster Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Committee. The report has been uh, disseminated to the town board. It was published on the town's website. Mr. Berardi, would you like to, uh, Chief Berardi, I should say, I've been reminded of that several times. Um, would you um, care to lead the conversation on the discussion uh, on that matter? Good thing Reed just wasn't here tonight, the Supervisor. Um, yes, uh, first of all, good evening. Uh, I want to start by thanking, uh, again, thanking all the committee members for all their hard work. Uh, it was seven months uh, of a lot of a lot of Thursdays that mm -hmm. were given up uh, for this, uh, this, this purpose. Uh, it was a well thought out purpose. Uh, the three officers that were, uh, were a liaison to the committee were, were greatly appreciated as well, as well as the legal resources from the DA's office and the public defender's office. Uh, I can't go without thanking Councilman Van Cleek for, for all his hard work and assistance as well. Uh, this document or, or this report being submitted tonight uh, was focused on uh, several areas that the committee felt were necessary uh, to improve uh, the practices of the Ulster Police Department. Uh, the first uh, topic was recruitment, hiring, and training. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the next was policies and procedures. Then was personnel reports and complaints. And lastly, uh, facilities. Um, so with that, um, again, like I said, I want to thank them for, for the thought that was put into us and, and, and reaching out and seeking public input as well. And I'm happy to uh, present this to the Town of Ulster Town Board tonight. Uh, this this report is uh, is well thought out and and comes with a lot of uh, a background from local residents. And uh, thank you, Mr. Van Cleek. Is there something you'd wish to add? I would just like to echo again my uh, uh, appreciation to all the committee members. I see that I leans on them since the rest of them. They were all people want their time. Uh, what we did in order to keep this very public and open self, we did attach all supporting as uh, we felt they were to be provided. And so it's, we tried to hear as possible. So there, everything's there. You know, I would like to thank all you for putting your hours in on this. Uh, this is a very important thing. You know, things change every minute hour of the day, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe the public would like to know, are you going to meet during the year? The uh, same we, committee. Uh, Eileen, uh, Eileen is uh, one of the, we've already met once since we finished. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, um, Lester Strong. Uh, yep, Lester Strong. And, uh, and we're going to, the, uh, the committee members all appear willing to continue to be a resource to the police department, to the town board, and to our community. Uh, have you thought about inviting other towns into your Zoom meetings to get their ideas on the reform? Because basically, uh, being an all-white town, the, like the town of Ulster, uh, we need different ideas coming from different towns. Well, I think I think that's why it, it goes with what uh, the governor's order was, the collaborative. Uh, we're not going to just stay within our, our ge geographical boundaries. We're going to reach out and and, and touch uh, community members, not only the ones that reside here, but the ones that uh, trans transient through here on every given day, as well as other local towns and, and agencies that border us. Yeah, because we're getting a, 
a lot of people coming up from the city now moving into our area. So things change there. Yep. Mr. Uh, Strong I, came in and made a presentation, I believe, based upon the city of Kingston plan. Mm -hmm. And he discussed the recommendations that were made to the city of Kingston, Rocco. Okay. So, um, and he had an opportunity to read through our plan also and give us some insight and some helpful thought. And he offered to be a continued resource. So, so I want to say thanks again. Um, the recommendations are welcomed by the town board. They will be considered. They have some of them have been talked about, and we have started to implement them, specifically body cams. Chief Berardi has been in communication with the vendor to uh, obtain a price quote and make sure that the body cams that are purchased integrate with the in-car camera systems. So we look forward to sometime in the next year um, having that program fully implemented. Uh, the second recommendation related to officer training, we've had two officers attend a uh, Ulster County Sheriff's Department sponsored uh, a training session for one week each officer. Uh, when I talked to one of the officers as to his experience, he felt it was very, very helpful. So we are trying to set up a continuation of that program. And Supervisor, uh, if I may interrupt, I did speak to the sheriff about that and we're working on uh, proceeding with a, a collaborative training uh, jointly in the near future. So, and in, and in, in that light, um, we have about thirty officers. If we were to split our personnel complement into two, we'd effectively shut down the town of Ulster Police Department for a whole two weeks collectively. Um, so the discussion that I had with Chief Berardi was that he speak to other members of the Ulster County Ch Police Chiefs Association to see if there were other agencies that were along that would along with the Ulster County Sheriff's Department wish to join in so that we would be able to offer a continuation of the classes spread out and be able to send one or two individuals at a time. So thank you for working on that Chief Berardi and uh, we'll look forward to the recommendation. With that, um, gentlemen, the package contains a resolution drafted by <laughs> town attorney um, Kovacs that outlines the reasons that this plan was prepared and it outlines the process that the town follows and it authorizes the town to submit the through the supervisor or the police chief to issue the required certification to New York State Division of Budget that says that we have met the requirements of this mandate contained in executive order number 203. So may I have a motion to accept the resolution as presented? I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion on the resolution? May I have a roll call vote, please? Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the resolution package has two, the following two items after the item that we just discussed are redundant. We've already considered them and taken action on them. The previous meeting, um, a lease has been presented to the town board for a pad site of 100 feet by 100 feet at the Ulster Transfer Station. This lease is modeled after the lease that the town has signed with Tarpon Towers for the cellular tower at the highway garage complex. Are there any questions on the lease that I can answer to any town board member? No. I'll make the motion to uh, sign the lease. Okay, there is a resolution in our package. I ask for a motion to accept the resolution. Mr. Morrow makes it. May we have a second? Any discussion? Councilman Roll. Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you.
Gentlemen, in the package, it's a resolution authorizing the tax surcharge settlement between Target 1318, which is the Target store in the Hudson Valley Mall, and the town of Ulster. This results in a prospective reduction in assessment of 1,200,000 effective for the assessing year 2020, which means that the 2021 tax bill <clears throat> will have a uh, refund attached to it. But I also want to note for the board that these refunds are indemnified to the town by the Hull Property Group as a condition of the settlement of the Hudson Valley Mall tax surcharge case three years ago, the town negotiated an indemnification of up to $100,000 for any refunds that the town, county, or school district would be required to be made to target as a result of a tax surcharge action. This provision expires at the end of 2021. Therefore, it's prudent that the town settle this agreement and claim against the indemnity as opposed to attempting to litigate this matter and dragging it out past the end of 2021, at which point we would lose the indemnification. So may I have I'll a motion? Make, I'll make that motion, I agree. Second. Any discussion on the matter? None. Roll Councilman call. Kitchen. <coughs> yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. The final item on our agenda tonight, I'm gonna to be calling for a motion to award the bid for the water and sewer chemicals. Ms. Reavy, would you like to read the results of the open bid? I apologize, I don't have that bid okay. in front of I me. I do, have the, I do have the uh, awardees um, for salt. I don't have the amounts, but for salt, it would be U.S. salt. Okay, I have them. I'll take that then. And chlorine. U.S. salt is $210.22 a ton for 24 ton minimum. For the water department, for the chlorine, JCI chemicals for 150 pound cylinder is $200 per cylinder. And for the sewer department chlorine, it's JCI chemicals also for $150 150 pound cylinder, it's $200 also. So may I have a motion awarding the bids as described? I'll make the motion. Second. Discussion? None. Councilman Kitchen. Yes. Councilman Morrow. Yes. Councilman Secreto. Yes. Councilman Van Cleek. Yes. Supervisor Quigley. Yes, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes tonight's agenda for our meeting. Um, normally, we would open the floor to public comment from any members of the public in town hall attending this meeting and seeing that Ms. Murphy's the only one here on Zoom. I, I would ask. I would like to comment. Please, that's what I'm asking for. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Eileen Murphy, and I reside at 114 Quail Drive in Kingston, which is the town of Ulster. And I am speaking as a um, volunteer for the um, police reform document that I participated in. So um, I hadn't planned on speaking, but I had just reviewed the document that was submitted. So I have two corrections, but I'd like to address. Uh, but I would also like to say that um, it was a, um, a very uh, enlightening experience to become so well informed about the workings of the police department in my town. Uh, I think that there was a high degree of cooperation and transparency. And, um, you know, I appreciate the open minded and invitation manner in which we were greeted. And anything that we asked for. Um, Chief Berardi was able to provide for us so that we could do our job. So, um, you know, when I look back on the last seven months, you know, I, I think maybe I might have done a few things differently. Um, but I will say that, uh, you know, I really learned a lot. 
and um, you know I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And to Congress, to Councilman um, Secreto's point, you know we had at, at Wayne Spagna, who is one of the members, he invited Lester Strong to speak to us, and it was to continue to highlight our sensitivity to structural and, and um, systemic racism. And um, his contribution to us was, was quite valuable. And we are still deciding whether there will be a citizens review board. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. And we of course would like the police chief's you know, opinion about that when the time comes, what, what he thinks we could do, how we could serve and how we could help. So I'll get to the two points. One is um, on page two under hiring of this document, uh, one of the points that was made by the public actually, uh, Laura Hartman sent in a uh, email and wanted to correct the language. And the word that was used in the hiring on page two was youngsters. And uh, she took issue as did, um, I believe uh, Clayton as well with thinking of young police officers as youngsters and preferring rather to say um, young people or young men or young women. So that's number one. So if that could be adjusted, um, uh, I would appreciate that. And the other thing that, uh, and finally what I would bring up is on page five, under the um, personnel and complaint, um, all of, uh, that was my subcommittee and um, all of the uh, information that I was able to glean and then suggestions I were able to make was included. The only thing that wasn't included was we did agree during one of our general meetings that there should be some kind of a way to identify the interaction of the police department with people of color. And this was another thing that was highlighted by Lester Strong that it was very difficult to find the number, the percentages of people who were arrested who were people of color and that it occurred mostly in the, in the business district. So I would like to say that that was something that we had agreed upon in one of our meetings to get a better computer cue, if, if you will, to, to more quickly run a report, to begin to look at, you know, uh, how many people are being arrested, um, or any interaction for people of color to continue to address the primary point of this police reform committee. And that's my only comment that I had. Thank you very much. Clayton, if I could just add, just so Eileen knows, Eileen, the document that was presented to the town removed the word youngster and put the word people in. So oh, the it word did. youngster, okay. it's not in the final, okay? And, oh, it's, um, yeah, okay, it thank you, good, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. So the second issue that you raised, Eileen, about the identification, I believe I recall that Governor Como had several proposals addressing that issue in his police reform legislation. And we're waiting to see what language he has put into the budget proposal. And Chief Berardi, do you have any comments on that? From what I understand, there's a there's a resolution in the assembly and looking to go to the Senate um, relative to that, identifying um, it, not only just race, uh, gender, more specifically, as well as um, national origin of of you know Italian, Irish, and things like that. It, it's pretty extensive. I'm not sure uh, where it is. Uh, like I said, it's in the assembly looking to go to the Senate. Um, more specifically, locally, uh, Ulster County uh, Information Services who manages our, our uh, records management system and does so for a majority of the police departments in Ulster County is working on a collaborative effort with the local police departments and the chiefs relative to having a, an online dashboard, uh, so to speak, where there's statistics that are relative to uh, being able to be ex accessed uh, rather quickly instead of seeking them out from individual police departments. So those things are already in the works as well. I believe the ticket that the, the document that is a traffic ticket that the town of Ulster 
uses at a local level is a standardized form from the state uh, yes, it is. It's the standard database the state police maintain. It goes. That, it's every every police agency in the state of New York uses that. So we do not have the ability to modify the format and add data fields to that. But I'm certain that given Governor Cuomo's comments, that a modification to that form will be forthcoming, and they will introduce tracking software within their track system. I believe. Yes to aggregate that information. So um, we'll keep you informed on that. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Dean, I see you joined us a little late. Is there, are there any comments that you'd like to make for us? Turn your voice on, sir. You're on mute, Stuart. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no. Um, the, the two uh, things I wanted to uh, were the, the uh, body cameras, and I think the worth of that has been proven uh, uh, by the situation at Buffalo Wings. Uh, had there not been body cameras, things could have been much worse and, and even further misinterpreted. Uh, and the other thing, which is a, a sort of a difficult subject, uh, is uh, the whole matter of public relations. Um, I'm of the opinion that it would, it might serve to have a professional who would do uh, public relations uh, to try to. Uh, to build bridges to the community, to manage crises uh, when they come up. I realize that everyone uh, in the town government and in the police department uh, has a piece of that at present, uh, but uh, I can't help but think that uh, the police would be better off policing and the government uh, uh, administration doing the administration and then having a single point of contact whose professional responsibility was managing public relations, uh, both in terms of crisis and in good times in terms of building bridges and, understand, and uh, coming to understand uh, what what the uh, uh, public uh, thinks and wants. Um, I think one of the problems is that uh, the populace uh, really doesn't uh, pay any attention to the police. They're just the utility like uh, 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 water or electricity uh, that's supposed to be there when they need it. But the actuality is that it's uh, a, a matter of, uh, of, of commitment, of sacrifice, and uh, uh, the, and, and more often than not, when something goes wrong, uh, they're seen as the fall people uh the fall guys and that shouldn't be uh they should be appreciated on a on a well not daily basis but on a uh you know they should be in people's consciousness and they should be valued and they should be respected and instead of being seen as an outsider they should be seen as part of the community to be respected and supported that'll do Thank you, Mr. Dean. Any further comments from town board members? I just have one. Mr. Martin. Um, before we, at caucus, we spoke about the correspondence from Regis about the ASOPIS. Do you want to have a discussion on that? I uh, would like to take that up individually uh, and bring it back to the meeting next week. Or okay, in thank you. Mr. Supervisor, if I could, one more sure. thing. Yeah, click. Um, I know that the, well, I believe and hope that the COVID situation is nearing an end, um, but 
I remember when we first had to respond in our community, both business, individually, and as a town, the struggle that it was, but there was a bit of an enthusiasm on everyone's part to do the best they could to deal with it. And I believe for the town of Ulster, I was impressed that we've done a really, really good job. One of the things I'm um, concerned about though, is as we near the potential end or lessening of this crisis, I'm, I'm afraid we may fall into the, the rut of not finishing well. Um, and it's gonna require management, it's gonna require diligent management right up to the very end about the enforcement of mask rules, uh, about cleaning. And I do believe that our, our staff and our crew is all in support of that. And I, and I believe they will. But I just want to encourage everyone not to lose faith. We've done a good job. We've run a good race. We are nearing the end, but we want to finish well. And this whole thing could, if, if not finished well, it would reflect poorly on the whole process. And I believe everyone has done an outstanding job. And I just want to encourage everyone to keep up the good work, keep up the effort, and let's finish this well. Thank you, Mr. Van Cleek. Any other comments? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, thank aye. you very much. We'll see you at the next town board meeting. Have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody. Good night.